Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and welcome to another episode of Mail Call. Of course, it's Mail Call, because I have all this mail here. I mean, I'm going to be cracking boxes, but I know I have not done a cracking the box. I'm aware of this. Uh, I do have a lot of book videos done and ready to put up, but they also take a while to actually publish, and I published a whole one, so I'm so proud of myself. Uh... <laughs> We're going to go, go proceed on with the mail call. Uh, not really much to cover. I did get quite a few boxes you can see here. We'll, we'll start with this box from MRC. And uh, we'll go on from there. So I hope you guys have all had a good uh, start of the winter. It's rain. It rained. It's, yeah, I wish it rained. It, it's, it snowed here more. It was supposed to rain, but then it snowed more. So we've actually had, I don't know, 12, 15 inches of snow so far this year. Um... All right, what do we have from MRC? Looks like we've got a very large, oh, a, a continuation of their architecture series. This one is the Colosseum. So uh, it looks like the entire whole round Colosseum. Uh, 1,500 scale, uh, it was imperial, as it was in Imperial Rome after about 82 AC. Okay, I'm familiar with ACE, but I'm not familiar with AC. <laughs> I'm familiar with AD, <laughs> and after Common Era, which is the whole new thing, you know, for Scholastic, but I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with AC, after Common? I don't know what that means. Anyways, um, I think they, they might have botched that one. Uh, I'll look it up, though, maybe I'm wrong. Um, what's odd is they're showing on the box the, the Colosseum kind of as it is today with the, the broken section, but they're showing the model as, you know, just the, the, as it looked originally uh, in Rome. Um, so interesting. Uh, we'll definitely get get a closer look at that one at some point. You know how much I love those those classic uh, models. Although I, I did never finish the pan the Parthenon, Parthenon, the Parthenon. Sorry, Parthenon. I knew that was wrong. Uh, the uh, because of some of its, it did have some maybe a little bit of design flaw in the model making. This one looks a little more consistent. I don't see any of the kind of issues I was seeing the Parthenon in this model, so hopefully they've maybe fixed that trend. They had like walls that didn't quite like seam together well and, and stuff. Um, so anyways, that got me a little bit uh, disheartened. So from Plus Model, we're gonna have a lot of things. We've got some green popcorn, which you know isn't really all that exciting, but it's more exciting than white popcorn, I suppose. Uh, we have from them the uh, Pilot's, Pilot's Mirage 2000 and 148th scale. Uh, we have, and that's a resin figure, of course. We have uh, Easy Line uh, Plus Model gas bottles. So these are like the um, welding style, arc welding style uh, tanks. We would call them tanks here in the United States. A welding tank or oxygen tank. Uh, these are Aeroline wheels for C-121 and 172nd scale. And I hope the, uh, I hope the furnace, see now it just suddenly got quiet, didn't it, in the video, because the furnace was running, so I, I figured it was good background white noise. Uh, 132nd scale uh, pilot for FU4, F4U Corsair. Corsair? I can say, I can say words. Um, what else do we have that we don't want to get popcorn everywhere? Let's see. Uh, a 148th scale pallet truck blue giant. So this is again, um, pallet trucks obviously move pallets around. It's kind of a, a one person hand thing. You know, it's got a hydraulic system. Um, used to use one myself back in the day. Much, much less uh, industrially looking or heavy, heavy lifting than that. But uh, 172nd scale propeller Hamilton for Lockheed Constellation. EC 121 L. So this is some multiple parts, L749 and L1049. So that's like a package of different uh, pieces he's done before. Um, 176 cent wheels for L49 Constellation. So that's, again, some of the, some of the, uh, the wheels by themselves. Um, and we have a big kit in here, which is a big resin kit, which is a caravan. Well, this, I guess, where the, the modern term caravan comes. So it's like, kind of like a, what we call a, a moving 
boxcar or a, or like almost like a job trailer. But uh, and that one's in uh, one thirty fifth scale. Looks like a wood construction, probably with some resin. We'll take a look real quick. Is it? Is it? Uh, mostly resin construction looks like. No, uh, no laser cut wood pieces. Mostly resin. So um, that looks like an interesting kit. Um, Joe Gruters. I'm saying that right. And I think that might have been it. Oh no, a couple more here hiding on the side. A uh, garden pump in 135th scale. And a US 300 gallon fuel tank in 135th scale. Much like the 250 gallon oil tank I have right next to me. Uh, okay, I think, uh, barring anything on here. Nope, okay. We send you samples. Thank you very much. All righty. What do we have that's next? We have a package from... I'm trying to see where it came from. France. Ow. Close. Do we draw blood? No. No. Just a light abrasion. Difficult to open boxes. You know, I love them. Okay, what do we have in here? It looks like some kind of oh, small figures or such. Um, 135th scale or 154th scale? Well, let me get my glasses so I can actually read. Uh, we have... Um, Painters Eric Colden. This is uh, this, oh, these are from the BlitzKit.fr. The BlitzKit, so they're Blitz, and uh, I'm guessing these are one. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Um, it doesn't have the scale on here. It just says um, that's the address. <laughs> um, ah, here we go. One thirty-fifth scale. Michelle. I'm trying to see where it's actually telling me which which kit this is. Okay. Well. I think they I think they're labeled on the front. So basically, a this looks like a French fighter. Um, take a closer look. I'm not sure if that's a resistance fighter or a soldier. It looks more like a soldier. Probably French. Um, the Free French Army. Guessing, totally guess, because I don't have any labels. Let's see if I <laughs> let's see if I have anything in here telling me. Nope, nope. Um, yeah, it says painter on the front. Figure premium on the box cover. I think that I think the boxes are all the same, and he's just putting labels on them. So I can only really show you what the figures look like, but you can kind of just get a guess from them what they are. Um, again, these are all one thirty-fifth scale, I believe, and uh, this one looks more like a desert soldier. And uh, if any figure painters out there are interested in these and want to get them for um, either a review or build, just let me know. Uh, and I will be happy to send them along. They are rather light and easy to ship. So these can ship internationally quite easily. Um, and last one. Again, looks more like a artillery person. That looks like maybe someone might from a different historical period. I'm not sure. That hat looks very non-World War II-y. World War II-y, is that a name? Oh, here we go. Uh, sorry. Dear sirs, it is a pleasure for me to send you... A new range of premium figurines. Regards, Steph. I think that says Steph. Can't quite read the handwriting that easily. All right. Okay. So figures from Blitz. What else do we have? We have um, uh, something here from our friend Mr. Coleman, who is a rep for um, Kitty Hawk and Panda. We'll see what he has sent us. All right, so this is the new Kitty Hawk kit. The Russian Yak thir uh, 13, right? We have 13, 13, 130? 13, 130, sorry. Yak 130, they're up to 130 already. Wow, that's uh, quite a progression. <laughs> uh, wow, that is one heck of a bubble-sized cockpit on this thing. That, that is a large bubble. 
um, two seater, obviously. I'm not really familiar with the aircraft, so yeah, that's the the, the name designation uh, misnomer or uh, 148 scale kit uh, from Kitty Hawk. This is actually the first Kitty Hawk kit I've ever gotten. I think most of these were going to Rowan before. Um, so uh, something new for us North American people. If you uh, you're interested in doing a review on a Kitty Hawk kit, a couple of um, plastic figures are included, or plastic. I think they're plastic. Yes, they are. Um, nice hefty manuals here. Very good, very good. All right, well, we're not doing a mini cracking the box, are we? Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, make sure I can't can set this here without it falling over. No, I can't. Yeah, I should have taken my box or my, book, my books down. Books, cooperate. All right, something from Tamiya. What could this be? I don't know what new kit from Tamiya has is on is due out soon. Hopefully it isn't already out. Ah, oh, this is the uh, the 370Z, and also something else, which I will keep you in suspense for. Uh, so the new Nissan 300Z from Tamiya, uh, 124 scale, I want to say yes, 124 scale. Uh, this is probably brand new, hot off the presses. Uh, I'm calling a Fair Lady Z Heritage Edition. Fair Lady Z is what they call it in Japan. We call it the, the 300 now, well, it used to be the 242, 6280. 300 now, it's three, more of the 300 series, I guess, or the three, what did they go? They went 300 to 350, 350 to 370, right? And these are all engine sizes, obviously, in liters. All right, so that's a, that's a pretty cool looking kit. Um, then we have uh, the Supermarine Spitfire Mark I from Tamiya in 148 scale. So if this is a new tool, which I'm probably guessing it might be, let me look. Um, then I'm sure there are some excited Spitfire fans out there. Oh my god, Tamiya, new kit! Yes, uh, 2018 Tamiya, yes. So, new plastic. Um, not a, uh, not just a reissue of something with a smite variation or, or whatever. Um, not a whole lot of plastic, as you can see. Three major sprues, uh, clear, uh, some photo etch included in this. Uh, very large dec decal sheet. I'll say it, since it's a Spitfire, I'll say decal. Uh, with some, um, some masking for canopy and some small, um, looks like, um, are those safety, are those seat belts? Kind of metal uh, uh, decal pieces, decal pieces. Sorry, sorry, I slipped back into my normal thing. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, definitely be taking a look at this and uh, hopefully getting off to somebody to do a build review or build feature on it. Uh, but yeah, um, so that's a, that's a pretty good, pretty exciting thing to see coming along. I think for for those Spitfire lovers out there. Oh, we got another box from Glenn. Glenn Glenn blessed us twice. Um, I'm guessing this might be hand, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. No, more, more of Kitty Hawks. All right, so, um, oh boy. Might have to come out this way. Come on. It's like birthing a baby. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we got one Panda kit, the armored, uh, N8 armored gun system in 135th scale. Are you settled now? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> This, uh, this is, um, again, a new toolkit with some photo etch. Um, just peek on the inside since I've been peeking at some of these. Um, looks very nice. The top has some nice anti-skid anti uh, materials on here and clear plastic pieces included. Looks very beefy, very nice. Uh, certainly for people who are SPG fans, that's something. Oh, this, this kit's heavy. All right, so this is the MiG-25 RB, RBT Foxbat. I remember this kit. This is like what the, isn't this the Foxbat was the uh, the plane that the, um, well, it wasn't quite based on, but it was it was whatever the, um, the impetus for the whole uh, what was the Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood movie Fox, Fox something right? It was Fox the name? It was in the name, not the, the not that the plane looked anything like. I think they just kind of made up the plane, didn't they? In terms of the way it looked. Um, all right, so uh, one forty scale. Uh, Static plastic model. I love. I love that has to be. You know, must say static plastic model. And again, I'll peek in this one just because I peeked in the last one. But um, wow, yeah, really a lot of a lot of parts in here. Uh, includes some nice. Uh, I'm not sure what you call this. Is it? This isn't um, 
3D printed, I don't think, but, uh, but it's just a different plastic. It's like a gray, a darker gray plastic uh, than the um, than the normal um, kind of lighter beigey brown plastic that's in here. So um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why this is looking a lot different. Unless these are well, they're not rubberized. I'm, I'm going to have to be see. You know, my curiosity gets the better of me. I have to I have to open this up and just kind of feel what they feel like. Oh yeah, no, they're definitely hard plastic. So, um, very nice, very nice. That actually looks like a woman on the, the one the one figure, but I think it's just a man in a very a very slim slim outfit. All right, so um, yep, a lot of plastic here. <laughs> Again, not doing not doing a grinding box. Sorry, uh, not not situated. I need to get the camera above me. It's you know it's not in the right place. Um, so. That is everything. Um, no books this week. My books are thank thankfully arriving in smaller numbers. I think uh, uh, like some of our magazine companies, I just, I don't have, I, try, I tried to notify them via email, but I don't think they got my notifications about new, uh, new addresses and all that. So fortunately, some of those magazines probably are now getting, going to get returned uh, as undeliverable. Um, what else do we want to cover? Okay, so uh, you know the drill. If you've watched these before, uh, these items are available for review. Check our link down below or go onto the websites. Um, I'll put the graphic up here to show you where to look on the website for the information about uh, how, to, how to do that process. If you're uh, sending in requests and, and they uh, don't seem to get any answers, don't, don't, don't fret. <laughs> I mean, uh, we do we do kind of like look at everything that's coming in. Um, we try to reply to everybody, obviously, that, that, that sends us requests, but sometimes they slip through or, or I, I'm not good about replying because I've got a zillion emails in my email inbox. Um, but, uh, but, you know, keep plugging away. I like to see persistence for one thing. So, uh, you know, like just sometimes I'll get a request from somebody and uh, then I'll get, you know, multiple requests and, and that, that's always a good thing. So, you know, um, don't feel like you're being a pest or whatever. Uh, I like to see that somebody's, you know, really interested, really, really interested. Because, you know, we've had some people get, get kits, and believe it or not, nothing's ever come of it. Imagine that. Somebody's getting sent a kit, and then nothing happens. So, so we are a little gun-shy sometimes, especially with new people that we haven't sent kits to before. But we, but we are interested in developing new relationships. It's not like we're not, you know, we're just like... Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't make these videos, would I? I mean, because what, what would be the point? Um, so... Uh, Again, check that out if you're new to the videos or whatever. Um, again, uh, the information there is also in our introductory video, like why we why we do these, why we get these, you know, what what it's all about, and so forth. So, I'm not going to go through it all again. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Mail Call.